Um, so a, a typical source for interference pattern like this might be a laser. And if you'd like to use a laser, the reason you'd like to use a laser is because a laser always produces the same wavelength. That's a big plus. Okay, all these incandescent light bulbs and things are producing multiple wavelengths simultaneously. And you guys have talked about electronic excitation and then coming down to a, a lower uh, excited state and the emission of photons and all that sort of stuff in chemistry. You talked about the bomber series possibly. Um, but a laser is always going to produce the same wavelength. Now, the real challenge is how to get two sources that both produce the same wavelength so that they're in phase when they leave this, this plane here. So we talk about them being coherent waves. How do you get two coherent waves, same wavelength and in phase? Here's the way that I would do it. And maybe you would want to do it this way too. I'll show it to you as the, as the overhead transparency. So putting down a piece of paper so you can actually see it, Here I've got my two slits, and I'm going to cut two slits into a piece of paper. And I'll show you this as a real demo, but let's, let's do this first. Oh, maybe I'll do it sideways. Two slits in a piece of card paper works, but I like using two slits that have been cut with a razor blade in a, on a piece of glass where I've painted the glass black, and then I'll take a razor blade and I'll go a slit slit. You can also get them prefab, you can pay for it. Uh, I don't mind doing it as a little arts and crafts project for physics. But you take a, a piece of glass like a, uh, oh, a, a microscope slide, paint it black. You can use uh, Indian ink, that's a nice thin uh, coating from art class, and it's opaque too. So you paint it with Indian ink, you take yourself a, a razor blade, slit slit, cut yourself a couple slits in it, and then you shine a laser at it. Shine the laser at the, the, the uh, microscope slide. And the light waves from the laser, and you notice there, there's uh, peaks and troughs with solid and dotted lines here, just like we drew earlier. They're going to hit the slits, and when they pass through the slits, so this is so old school, but I think it's so fun. A little transparency on top there. They pass through the slits, and they produce a pattern that we drew by hand earlier, you know, where the, the solid lines and the dotted lines overlap at certain points, and you get these constructive and destructive interference patterns. And nicely, you see, at, at first they start with a curvature, and later on, they end up straightening out. And that's why we, we have to talk about this in terms of limits, because later on they do straighten out. I, it's frustrating, I know, but I'm, I'm trying not to bring up limits too much here. Okay, so the distance L between the plate plane and the projection screen plane is gonna be much, much bigger in these scenarios than either the distance between the two slits or the width of the slit themselves, okay? Much, much bigger. And so we have the, and the, the width of the slit itself is much, much smaller than the actual wavelength. Anyhow, as these waves interfere with each other, they get to a screen. And when they get to a screen, you can see, because I have trough line, trough line, trough, I'm oh, sorry, a dotted line, solid line, dotted line, solid line, dotted line, solid line. Is this going to be a destructive interference point or a constructive interference point? Destructive, yeah. Destructive interference. Now, if that's destructive interference, what you would expect to see if I shone this laser at the two slits is some sort of a pattern on this screen over here. And I want to highlight the fact that I wouldn't use a light bulb because a light bulb won't produce single light wave light. I would use a laser there. Point the laser at these two slits so that when the light exits these two slits, not only is the wa are the waves in phase at this point, <coughs> if they were to be at the same point, but they're also the same wavelength because the two light sources actually came from one light source. I just was able to split them up somehow. Is okay. powerful laser you have? Uh, that one over there that you plug into a wall. We've got a bunch of laser pointers too. In any case, this is, this is the pattern that you get. Something like this. And if I were to follow any of these dark bands back with my finger, all the way back to the laser, I would find that my finger, if I traced it backwards, would stay in the dark the whole way if I followed it all the way back to the laser along a perfect line. But if I followed my finger all the way back to the laser along this line, it would stay lit up the whole time, because it would be along these constructive interference bands the whole time. This is a okay. thing you can slide in. Yeah, I think it's kind of fun. Hey, who ever said the people in the 50s weren't creative, right? They're very creative, just didn't have the technology. And I, I love this. Nice little overlay. 